Welcome to Tech Brothers. In this video, we're going to learn how to configure SQL Server Availability Group in Microsoft Azure. These are high-level steps. So our first step is accessing SQL Server from both nodes. What it means is that if I am no, I am in node two, I want to access SQL Server that's installed on node one, whether node two can access that SQL Server. Uh, we will open a SQL Server Management Studio. We'll connect to node, um, the opposite node or any other node that if you have more nodes in your uh, cluster, uh, you wanna make sure that they have communication. Sometimes the reason I have put that in there because if you have firewall on and you don't have 1433 uh, port open or SQL Server uh, XE and SQL Server Agent XE allow in your firewall, you will run into issue that you can't connect from uh, uh, node one and if you're trying to access node two or vice versa. So we will make sure that that communication is there before we start actually enabling availability group or creating availability group. Our second, uh, um, Step right here is enabling always on availability group on on nodes. In previous videos, we have created um, cluster. We have installed SQL Server. So now it's uh, time for us to go ahead and actually create availability group. And one of the one of the uh, prerequisite is that you have to enable the uh, always on availability um, feature um, in SQL Server configuration manager of each SQL Server that is going to be part of this cluster. So after we enable that, we will prepare uh, one database as a test database to be a part of uh, availability group. It may not have anything, but just we wanna make sure that we can create the availability group. The current configuration of SQL Server and agent services, uh, I'll show you that uh, what my current configuration is. Mostly um, folks not pay attention that uh, what SQL Server services needs to run under, which account they run under. But uh, when you create SQL Server or SQL Server agent, when you install that, uh, the uh, account uh, that comes from the pre-installed, the, the way that we configured the image, we, we took the image when we created SQL Server uh, 2017 with the operating system 2017, uh, 2016, I'm sorry. It came with the SQL Server running under anti-authority uh, MS SQL Server and agent running the same way. There are issues if you will leave the con uh, current configuration the way that uh, it is, uh, it has come from uh, uh, Microsoft, but we will let's go through that and resolve one by one and then there is a an easy solution we will uh, look into that too but i will assure you that you will run into that issue so uh, we will create availability group and obviously deal with the issues that we um, you know face during creation and then creating availability group listener uh, we will create. We may create uh, availability group listener in this video. We may not because availability group listener creation is not an issue as long as your account that you're using has the ability to update your DNS and create objects, computer object, and delete all computer object um, in your DNS. It'll be okay. Uh, we can create the availability uh, group listener, but we will have issue connecting to availability group listener. So in the next video, what we'll do, we'll create Azure Load Balancer. And then after that, uh, we will link that Azure Load Balancer with our current cluster. So we can, if we fail over, we can always connect to our uh, AG listener because that's the whole point of this uh, tutorial that you have a, a availability group listener and your application can connect to availability. Uh, listener. So let's go and take a look on uh, current configuration. So uh, right now, right here, uh, this is TBS uh, SQL 01. That's one my one of my node, and then TP, TBS SQL 02. Basically, uh, this is just the DNS alias is is uh, TBS SQL 2 instead of uh, SQL 02. I couldn't take the SQL uh, TBS SQL 2 uh, because it was already taken uh, somehow. So let's go on uh, uh, TBS SQL 01. That is exactly how the, the host name as well. So let's make sure, uh, let's run a SQL Server Management Studio. I'm gonna, uh, actually I didn't want mean to close that, but it's okay, we'll open it again. So if we connect with SQL Server Management Studio uh, from SQL node one, we're gonna try to connect with the SQL node two because that's how we're gonna check the communication.
All right. Um, our management studio is open. Let's connect with uh, TBS SQL 2. That's what I was talking about the, when, when the alias name was set as 02. It's, it's not actually the 02. It's just 2. So let's connect with that and make sure that we connect with TBS SQL 2. And keep in mind, this is a TBS SQL 01 node. So we made sure that um, SQL 02 is connected from SQL 01. So it has the communication. Let's go on the other node and make sure that the other node could do the same thing. So we're going to go on to and open up a SQL Server Management Studio. Okay, from uh, node two, we want to connect with node one just so that we know that we can connect with node one. So this is zero one. And we can connect with our SQL Server um, from respective nodes and across the nodes. As you can see, the SQL Server agent services are not running. Let's go ahead and start those on both nodes. And I'm going to connect with the node one and start the SQL Server agents. All right, uh, we're, we're ready uh, to move on to our next step to enable always on availability group on both nodes. So for that, you have to go into SQL Server Configuration Manager and click on SQL Server Services uh, and go to the properties and click on always on high availability. So this is our cluster right here, TBS AZ SQL cluster. So we'll enable that right here and click apply obviously you have to create uh, restart your services after you enable that so i'm going to go ahead and restart the services so that it can take effect and do the same thing on node 2. And this is sql server configuration manager go to the sql server properties go to always on tab and enable always on availability group and apply Click OK, OK, and restart your services. Once this is done, then we're ready to uh, uh, prepare uh, our database to be uh, added into our availability group. At least you have to have one database in order to create the database availability group. So let's, uh, you can you can do it from either node. I'm gonna start uh, doing it with uh, SQL 01. So I'm gonna close this one and uh, refresh this and disconnect actually uh, TBS SQL 2 because I wanna connect with the local node here, which is right here. And let's go ahead and create the database. So you, you have an option, create a new database and take the backup of it, but I have already done that. You can just say uh, test database, test AG and click OK and it'll create the database and then you take a backup of that and restore on the other node in uh, no recovery mode. But I have already taken the backup, so I'm gonna restore the database instead. So this is not really the part that how you, you start with, but since I already have the database backup that I can save some time for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and restore the database from my backup because I'm gonna use the same backup to restore that database onto the other server. So this is the database, I'm gonna just uh, restore it. And on this, since this is going to be my primary server so i will uh, primary replica so i will just restore it in recovery mode right here but my secondary replica i will restore it in non-recovery mode so click ok and successfully let's connect with node 2 as well so we can restore that database over there the same backup file that i have already moved to a location where I can access it. So this is the AZ DB test. So I'll click that. And now on the secondary one, 
since I I will just go ahead and 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 make these steps easier for not use not use the wizard to complete these steps, but I'm gonna just uh, restore it with no recovery so I can just join on use the join only option. Click OK. So if we expand the database, this is in restoring mode and this is uh, in complete mode. So now we're ready to uh, create our availability group. Uh, we have just completed, uh, you know, adding on the uh, preparing a database to be in availability group. So right now we don't have a bit availability group. I expand on both. So let's go ahead and create availability group. Right click and click on new wizard and we're gonna take and uh, give a name right here. Um, AZ TBS AG, you can say test, but I'm just gonna go with the uh, AZ TBS AG and click next. The database does meet the requirements right here. Select that. Connect with the second replica right here. That's a secondary replica. I'm gonna click on here and do it synchronous. And if you take a look on the endpoints, it's gonna create the endpoints with the port. This is very important, 5022, 5022. If you have your um, um, firewall enabled, uh, this port needs to be, it's a TCP IP port. It needs to be enabled for the communication in order for this to work. And these are the endpoints name. These are mirroring endpoints, but if they are already in use, uh, you have to change uh, the endpoints name and the SQL Server service account local system. It'll tell you that uh, what system it will go and uh, create these endpoints and will probably go on the secondary server and try to to uh, uh, create that point uh, the endpoints. So if if this local system um, again that we're I'm referring back to where the problem is going to exist. Uh, but uh, let's go it because a lot of, I've seen a lot of folks just uh, go and create the SQL Server. Uh, they, they install the SQL Server, they get to this point, and then they try to create the availability group, and availability group doesn't get created. But I'm going to show you real reason why. So it's a local account, and some for some folks it's a, a NT Authority MS SQL account. So either account, if we click next right here, it's gonna tell us that um, endpoints table, the, these are not the, uh, uh, they, are, they are non domain accounts. They are local to the server itself. Usually you won't get this option if it's running under NT authority backslash MS SQL server, but um, I had to reproduce this, so I couldn't go back to NT authority MS SQL. But just take it, uh, it'll create the same issue for us. Main thing uh, in my mind was that, okay, recreate the issue so that my audience will know that what kind of issues they can run into. So I'm gonna go ahead and click yes, and click on join only, and click next. And let me make sure that, uh, well, let's, let's, let's click next and see that uh, if we run into the same issue. And click finish and click on more detail. It's gonna configure the endpoints, it's gonna start uh, the health check, and when it comes to this point, creating availability group, that's where it should fail. If it succeeded, then somehow I have given the permission already, but it's a permission issue. You will see that it'll get stuck here, and um, you know, in the beginning, you will see that uh, it, it will not be able to create the uh, availability group uh, you can actually go in your cluster and see that it will create the, this uh, availability group and then it will it will not be able to bring it online the reason behind that is that the local system the the service account that sql server is running does not have permission to alter the availability group on the sql server right here and once it fails i will show you that uh, how to resolve this problem to give permission if you wanted to keep your uh, um, the configuration the same uh, but um, again the the solution I'll provide you is just go ahead and and please please run your SQL Server agent and SQL Server um, 
uh, engine accounts under uh, a legitimate service account. That will take care of the issue. As you can see that creating availability group right now is failed and this is going to take forever. So let's go ahead and cancel that because we were not able to really create the availability group. So let's cancel this and minimize this. This will take a little bit time. So we'll go in the security and how to fix that issue. Uh, keep in mind, we're going to run into this issue again. So we'll go to anti authority system. We'll go right here um, at server. You, it has to be able to uh, um, have permission to alter the availability group, but in order for me to make it easier and not take a whole lot of time making this video, you can run a T-SQL right here and, and give the same permission that it needs, but I'm gonna give sysadmin just for the sake of simplicity right now. I know it's not, uh, it's not, it's not really a good practice, but uh, let's do that on, this, on the other server as well. NT authority system because when when it's it comes pre-configured you will notice that anti service MS SQL it is already says admin so this is the this is the account that goes and connect with other 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 uh, server this is how it goes I, I really don't like these NT authority systems I the production system recommendation is that you have your own service account and you give permission says admin to your service accounts on your uh, SQL server SQL servers or nodes that uh, that's going to be involved in this uh, cluster so that's the easiest uh, solution and you will believe me you'll save tons of time in the beginning if you will do that so I'm gonna go ahead and cancel this uh, again and minimize this and we can go ahead and actually recreate it. Um, but that will take, uh, that wizard will take time. Let's uh, right click and refresh and see that if it has created any and it has not. So let's go and fire up the, the wizard again. TBS uh, AG test. And we're going to use the same database. Add the replica. And I'm going to do synchronous. And click next. It's going to give us the same warning. It's OK. Yes. And join only. Now, keep in mind that um, we, we got an issue on creating availability group see how it successfully created the availability group now it's stuck on joining the uh, uh, the uh, the database the secondary uh, database so uh, let it run for a couple minutes and then we'll go and see that what is the issue why it can't join because it says empty database is not a big database it should take just uh, maybe less than a minute um, but uh, let's let's wait for a little bit All right, while, while it's uh, running this, let me go and uh, look at on SQL, our primary replica to go in the SQL Server log and see what is uh, going on. What is exactly the issue? So I'm gonna click on management and go to SQL Server log and double click this and see that uh, what, and this is exactly the issue right here, it shows us. It is trying to connect to this uh, our second node as TBS SQL to dollar because our services are running under system. So system means that computer is basically trying to on the fly. It's trying to create a, a, a service account and trying to get into the other SQL server, which it doesn't have permission to connect to our um, you know the, the 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 server handshake fails. So the best resolution for this is you can go ahead and cancel this and I'll tell you that believe me uh, this will uh, save you a lot of hassles. So if you go and run your account under 
a proper SQL service uh, service account and give proper permission to that service account in both of those nodes or if you have multiple nodes make sure that you give um, uh, that permission to all of the nodes and it will save you a lot of time and save you hassles from running into issues like that and let me go ahead and, and show you you know how you do that we have to do it on each node so I will um, I'll open the configuration manager on this node and then I'll go on the other node real quick so we can save some well it came up so what I'm going to do I have a service account so this is your active directory service account so in my case I have TBS admin that is the service account oh uh, well let me change the location to entire directory so this is the service account uh, that will run SQL Server services. Usually in m m organizations, uh, this account doesn't have really um, permission to update uh, the computer services, um, uh, computer names or delete the computer names. And if this is the account, uh, then you need to talk to infrastructure and they will uh, provide the permission temporarily or uh, you know find a resolution for you but uh, in my case this account has a permission to create and delete um, computer objects in my DNS so I, I shouldn't face any issue when I'm creating um, this availability group or even listener so right now let's deal with this problem first So I'm going to apply this and yes, I will restart the services or it will restart the services. And while it's doing that, let's go and do on the other server as well. So I'll change the location to entire directory. Provide the password. And apply and click yes. And let's go back to the other compute uh, other node to see that if uh, that is okay so as you can see that uh, it's running now under TPS admin and let's make sure that uh, on um, node 1 that uh, TBS admin has the proper permission so if I go in login and go and refresh this And right here is TBS admin and if you click on server role it's sysadmin so we should not have any problem when we uh, redo everything but uh, let me make sure that uh, it has happened on node 2 as well all right the MS SQL servers are running under this account let's go and this is no two I'm going to refresh this close this and connect to no two or I could have just done it uh, from the other account uh, from the other server so just want to make sure that TBS admin has the proper permission in my case for just the demo purposes it it has the sysadmin so okay and let's go back to our node one and try to create our um, availability group now well availability group is already created as, as we have seen so it, the, the, the problem is that uh, if, if you go into our um, availability group here, you will see that now it's probably have joined. So the database is now online. 
and if we go one of these uh, this this was closed okay so let's go on the other one and look at that this is success as soon as uh, th this this keeps working back behind the scene as soon as we gave proper permission and we changed everything it was able to join that so so now if we go on our primary this is our primary right here. And our database is online and we do not have the listener right now. Let's go ahead and, and test our failover. So if I, um, let's take a look on the properties first. If you have asynchronous right here, after failover, you have to resume the database movement. It will pause the database movement. Uh, for example, let's, let's, let's do that as well. Uh, just uh, to make sure that we we cover that scenario as well. So since it, it, this is asynchronous, so I'll go ahead and fail over from the primary node. You always have to go on the primary node. And right now it's telling us that since it's asynchronous, so we can face the data loss. We're okay with that. Click next, confirm, and connect with our secondary replica and finish that. Once the failover completes, we'll see that our database movement has paused and we have to resume that. So click OK. And if you we refresh this, refresh everything. And let's see that uh, if we uh, come here, this became primary. And we'll see that uh, database is online here. Um, I'm going to refresh this again and you will see see this little pause button right here on the secondary let's go ahead and click on resume database movement if it's a synchronous it will not uh, happen this way but if it's asynchronous you will um, you'll have to resume the database movement in order for your transaction to go and, and sync with that even though if it's asynchronous but still a little bit latency but your data will get sync so okay we were able to uh, create our availability group and take a look that uh, the easiest solution that uh, let me go back to uh, the main page um, the resolution for uh, of each scenario we, we, we did actually try to give the uh, access to uh, the, sy uh, the system account uh, NG authority system account to make sure that you know if we want to keep the same configuration let's let's go ahead and just give the permission and we'll be we were able to create the availability group however joining we still had an issue easy fix to avoid all these issues is to go ahead and run your ser SQL server and SQL server agent under a service account that's all uh, you have to do and make sure that uh, those accounts have permission um, and uh, then uh, creating availability group listener we can create the availability group listener now but let's link that uh, creating availability group listener uh, with the next video that uh, when we create uh, azure load balancer um, uh, the load balancer we will create and then we'll create availability group because they are all linked together and it'll make sense that um, i'll push push it to the load balancer video and then create that and i hope uh, so far it helps and I'll see you in next video.